my relationship was starting to get on the rocks, so I did the thing anyone would do. I took my girlfriend for a romantic cave walkthrough. Alright, don't judge me. I'm sure I had a good reason why I decided to take her to an old abandoned mine. In fact, I was going to propose in the old abandoned mine. I mean, the date was set. The ring safely tucked away in my pocket. The last section of the mine has a type of rock, that, you know, one that glittered in dim light. Figured that would be a good place to do the deed. Even though a romantic dinner might have been the better idea. The first sign of trouble was two of our mutual friends came along making it a double date. That's fine. I mean, I could deal with that. I could easily drop hints to them to get out of the way before I got down on one knee. When we arrived, Tabby and Jason were waiting for us out front. We needed to do a small hike to get to the entrance, and Leah was already in a mood. Her shoes and massive purse were not meant for a hike or walking around in an old mine. She refused to leave her purse in a car and claimed that she didn't have any other shoes. I gave our friends a wave when I saw them, walked over to them. And we stood chatting for a bit, getting caught up with each other's lives while standing outside the old mine's entrance. When Leah was off taking a smoke break, I got in close to whisper to my friends about the plan. Hey, could you guys, like, uh, give us a few minutes alone when we reach the dead end with all the nice rocks? I mean, I need to ask Leah something, I told them, hoping my hint got through. Oh. Oh, Jeannie. Tabby started and shut up real fast. From her tone, she almost sounded sad. Maybe she wanted to get married first. No problem. We'll leave you to it. Jason butted in. With everything planned out, we were all set to get inside the cave. Leah joined us, and soon we were all walking along, chatting. But Leah kept a bit silent, checking her phone pretty often, even though I doubt she had a signal. I was nervous as hell. More than I'd ever been in my entire life. And I prayed that I was acting normal. Oh, I forgot my, uh, water bottle in the car! Tabby said suddenly, so much for acting natural. Jason nervously nodded and took her hand. I'll help you go back and look for it. Without giving us a chance to answer, they both ducked out of the cave, leaving us alone sooner than I thought. Let's hurry up so I can get home before I miss my show, Leah told me, taking the lead. Hey, we can always stream it later. That was not the right answer. She gave me a nasty look, and I started to wonder where my sweet girlfriend went. For a few weeks, she's been getting annoyed easier, always on her phone. It made me second-guess everything I'd done, wondering what set her off. And we walked in silence. My phone buzzed. There was a text from Jason encouraging me. I smiled. Then my phone shut off on its own. I frowned, trying to turn it back on. I wasn't too worried when it didn't boot up right away. It looked like Leah's still worked in case we needed one. I put it back into my pocket to check over later. The way to the dead end was an easy one. Just straight until we hit the three-forked path and take a left opening. Then, just keep on walking. The other paths led to more dead ends, but none as impressive as the one that we were going up toward. Leah let out a sound, and I guessed her phone started to have issues. That rock looks like a dagger, I pointed out, not knowing what to say or how to start as we walked into the entrance of the glittering room. Leah looked down at the rock, not looking very impressed. In fact, she hadn't looked impressed at all during the trip. I was trying to ask this girl to marry me today, and yet... I was at a loss for how to bring it up. Before we arrived, I had this all planned out in my head. Now it was blank. I want to leave, Leah said a few seconds after we arrived in the dead end of the sparkling walls. I expected her to be impressed, I mean, at least by a small amount. Even if you didn't like rocks, the sight of the glimmering wall should be enough to move even the most stubborn of people to a positive emotion. My heart sank, and I was certain that I, I wasn't going to get to the question that day. I needed to regroup and think of a different plan. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's meet up with Tabby and Jason. My voice sounded small and defeated. I put a hand into my pocket, feeling the ring box, promising I would think of a better plan. It just needed more time, and I should relax. 
For whatever reason, today was just not my day. We walked down the same way we took to get to the dead end, and... And... Somehow we got turned around. There was a spot where the path forked into three ways. We took the left one to get to the inner dead end chamber. Should have just walked right back out into the forked area and towards the path with the light. There was no path with light coming from it. I stayed on the left side, thinking it felt right. Only for us to loop back around to the forked path again. <sighs> I gave a nervous laugh over my shoulder to a very unimpressed Leia. She tapped her foot, and I decided on the right one. <laughs> we looped back again. Checking my phone, I wanted to text Tabby, asking her for a map. But my phone refused to go past the lock screen. I assumed maybe it was something in the rocks messing with it? We already took the two-sided opening, so logic would say the middle would lead us out. We're never gonna get out of here, Bria whined. I didn't blame her for getting a bit annoyed and whiny. We had all been trapped in the dark for at least a half an hour now. I just didn't understand how it was possible. There were only a few forks in the path. One was bound to lead out. I was positive that the middle path was the way out, but now I... I wasn't so sure. As we rounded a corner, I saw the dagger-shaped rock, and my heart sank. The rocks glittered in my dim flashlight. We ended up where we started. At the end of the path. See, I told you! Leah hissed frustrated. She dug in her massive purse and pulled out a pack of cigarettes. She promised to quit. Now wasn't the time to remind her. I didn't care if she was still smoking, but I... I didn't think it was wise of her to light up inside of the old mine. I mean, who knew if there was old gas still inside? Wasn't that a major issue all mines had? Hey, hey, maybe you shouldn't smoke in here, I told her meekly. Give me one good reason, she replied sharply. I didn't have one. I suddenly felt on the spot for my lack of knowledge about mines. I had only taken her here because I thought that it would be pretty. Feeling guilty for the whole situation we found ourselves in, I turned away from her, looking over the shimmering wall, and I started. I started to second guess myself about how, how many paths this mine really had, and if it was possible that I'd missed one in the dark. A sound from behind us made us tense up. I was just about to check my cell phone for the thousandth time and nearly dropped it when I heard soft footsteps coming down the tunnel. It wasn't Leah's. I could tell that much. I turned on my heel, shining a flashlight down the dark path, wondering what I would see. It sounds silly that I expected anything but a person. Being underground plays tricks on you. My beam of light landed on a boy. Blonde hair standing out in the dark, big blue eyes staring over at us. He was wearing flip-flops, so that was the source of the strange walking steps. His t-shirt looked at least five sizes too big for his frame. Couldn't have been any older than thirteen, if that. Leah gave him a side eye and didn't acknowledge him. Uh, hey, little guy, what are you doing down here? I should have asked about the way out, but the moment I saw him, I was more worried about a child being alone. Mushroom collecting, he answered back in a small voice. I looked at him, confused. He opened his hand to show off a mushroom that looked like the same texture of the rock, glittering the walls. Lifting his long shirt, he put the mushroom in a baggy side pocket of his shorts. What are you doing down here? He asked, looking between us. Clearly, we're having fun, Leah snapped. She dropped the last of her cigarettes and stomped on it with her heel. I ignored her bad attitude and wished that she would tone it down so that she wouldn't scare the kid away. We got, um, lost, actually. Could you show us the way out of here, please? I asked in a sweet tone, hoping that it would counter Leah's. The boy gave a long stare and nodded. I thanked him, and we started to follow him down the path. I tried to take Leah's hand, but she pulled away, still angry over being lost. Why are we trusting a kid to get us out of here? She said, not even trying to whisper. Because he knows the way. It doesn't matter if he's a kid or not. All right, fine. Don't snap at me. I didn't think I'd raised my voice. She was stressed, so anything could feel like an attack. We all walked in silence as we went down the dark path, 
I started hoping that the way out was near when I felt some whiffs of air against my face. Now that I was noticing them, I thought I saw some mushrooms camouflaged in with the rocks. I'd never seen mushrooms like that before. I, and I would ask about them when we got out. There's no way this kid is getting us out of here, Leah muttered under her breath. This way. I just realized I never asked the boy's name. We turned a corner and I... I stood in shock, mouth open. Before us was a dead end I hadn't seen before. Th this doesn't make any sense. We should have made it to the trail with the three pathways. I, I even walked up to the solid wall of rock, placing my hand against it to see if it was real. That doesn't make sense, I said finally. I told you he would get us lost. Leo was at the end of her rope. She walked off in a huff, digging out her smokes again and starting to fiddle with her useless cell phone. I turned my attention to the boy, who looked a bit too calm for being around two stressed-out adults. Hey, uh, what's your name? I asked him. I might not know the way out, but I, I could at least start with what information I could learn. He opened his mouth to answer, and then shut it. Clearly, he didn't trust strangers with his name. I didn't blame him. Poor thing must be scared being trapped with us. Uh, how, how about a nickname? I'm Jamie. He fiddled and debated on what name he should give me. Finally, he decided on one. Blue eyes looking up at me. Mostly hidden behind wavy blonde hair. Ian, he said in a small voice. It's a good name, I like that. We'll get you home, Ian. Don't worry. How about we head back... See if we somehow missed a pathway in the dark, I asked and offered my hand. Holding a child's hand was just a normal reaction. I didn't even think about how it would make him feel more awkward around me. When I realized my mistake, I started to draw it back, but Ian took it before I did. He looked perfectly fine holding onto a stranger's hand. In fact, he seemed kind of excited and hiding it very poorly. Someone should talk to him about trusting strange men in caves. When we got him to his parents, I would mention it. Leah looked back at us, disgusted. We're not having one of those, so don't get used to it, she said harshly. And this time, took the lead. At that moment, I really wondered what I ever had seen in her. I chided myself for the thought. I mean, she was just stressed out, and normally not like this. I gave Ian what I thought to be a comforting smile. And we started to walk. And walk. My phone clock kept glitching out and looping backwards, so I had no idea how long we walked for. Ian gave no complaints. I started to get worried. I only expected a short walk, and I brought no supplies. I suppose when people noticed us missing, this place would be swarmed with rescue workers. But how long would that take? Didn't it only take three days without water to die? If my phone was working, I could look that up. Hell, if it was working, I'd be out of here by now. Oh, we came with friends. They left before us, and when they see we didn't come out, they'll send someone. I told Ian, trying to comfort him. As if. But those two just went right home. And they're finished dinner. In a nice warm bed by now. Leah snapped behind her, her voice echoing. Please, let's not do this right now. I was completely embarrassed over how she was acting. Shuffling Ian behind me, I didn't want him to hear her, but it was impossible in the small space. Do what? Fight? Because you have it coming. I mean, why would you even bring me down to this shitty place? If you were going to propose, why didn't you take me somewhere normal? In her rage, she took off one of her shoes and threw it at me. She missed. Her little temper tantrum was pathetic. Still, I was... I was hurt by it. You knew? I asked. The ring box feeling like a hundred pounds in my pocket. Duh! Hand it over! She held out her hand, expecting. What? The ring! Hand it over! I should at least get it after suffering through all this! I felt a slight tug on the back of my shirt. Ian was peeking from behind me staring at Leah, barely hiding the disgusted look that matched the one that she'd given him earlier. I put a hand on his back, feeling a bit sorry that he was stuck hearing such drama. I... I, I didn't bring the real one. I... 
I just have a fake cheap because the one I ordered didn't come in yet. I lied. She let out a huff of anger and started down the path again, now missing a shoe. She stopped in a few feet, just trying to be away from me. Ian gave a hint of a smile. I think he was proud that I didn't give in to her demands. I picked up Leah's shoe and I gave it a soft toss towards her. I didn't do that much. It was silently agreed to take a break. Leah was chain-smoking through her pack up front, and me and Ian sat back against the hard stone wall. I'm sorry. He gave me a little shake of his head and rested his cheek on my knees. Staring down at where Leo was for a few seconds, he looked back over at me. Is that why you came down here? To ask her to marry you? Yeah, but uh, I swear she's never like this, I told him, my face flush in the dark. Have you ever had any fights? Or gotten in trouble like this? He asked. And I, I didn't understand what he was getting at. Um, well... Uh, no. Then how did you know what she's like under stress? I guess it would be nice to be with someone. Never have any issues, but what if you do? And how are you going to deal with your partner going out of control when you never experienced it? How old was this kid? He looked a lot younger than the words he was saying. I thought this generation watched video games, not people dealing out relationship advice. Are you speaking from experience over there? I joke with him. He let out a small smile and his expression went back to the serious one again. It looked as if he was debating on telling me something. How do you think your two friends got out of here? He asked, still not taking his eyes off where Leo was. They took the right path? I said, stating the obvious. You thought we were going the right way when I started to guide you. What changed your mind? His blue eyes shifted towards mine, and I... I suddenly felt... uncomfortable. There was a change in the air surrounding him in a way. I just... I couldn't place it. I couldn't meet his gaze, and I looked away, trying to remember what happened when we ran into the dead end. I don't... I said honestly. Everything that happened just muddled in my head. Then pay attention the next few times. Standing up, he waited for me to follow him. This was strange. This was all strange. Until that point, I just thought that we got lost naturally. But now... Now it felt like other forces were at work. I was uneasy. But still wanted to trust this boy. I gave him a small nod and I followed him. Hey, we're going to try looking for a way out again. I called down to Leah, only to get a very rude answer back. Just walk. She'll follow us. Or not. I almost felt bad for her. She swore at us and hurried after, getting delayed to put her shoe back on. We started walking again. This time, I felt as if Ian really did know the way out. But I didn't know what he was trying to prove or show us. With him leading the way, I yet again felt the slight breeze of fresh air, and hope stirred, only to have it come crashing down. I told you, he's just a kid. I bet he got us more lost in the first place. His voice whined behind us. I turned to tell her off when I ran directly into a wall. I bounced off, landing on my backside painfully, swearing I looked up to see a dead end, one that I should have noticed long before slamming into it. I heard Leo whining behind me, but I... I didn't even pay attention to her. I dropped my trusty flashlight. It flickered, but kept lit. I picked it back up, looked over the wall, wondering how it seemed to appear out of nowhere. Then to my horror, I realized I didn't see Ian. This way! Shutting my flashlight down the narrow pathway, I saw the boy behind Leah. That, wait, that didn't add up. How did he get behind us so fast? She let out a small scream, noticing Ian in the dark. He took off, disappearing, and I got up to follow him. Leo protested behind me. We both fumbled along, quickening our pace, following his footsteps in the dark, 
and we kept running into dead ends. No matter which way we went, they all ended in rock walls. We didn't take a new path or turn. It, it was all on straight lines, both ways. But we kept hitting the blocking walls at different paces. It was just guesswork because our phones both stopped working. One wall felt like five minutes of walking before we hit another. Then we would turn to walk a few seconds before arriving at a wall that was not there before. Leah was complaining the entire time, in near tears. She raged about me being the reason why we were stuck. I heard Ian's footsteps just beyond where my flashlight would reach. Finally, I needed to stop and I slumped against the wall. We are sobbing off somewhere close by. I was getting dehydrated. Doing this without water was taxing on my body. Small footsteps stopped in front of me and Ian appeared. He sat down, cheek on his knees, looking me over. How do we get out? I asked him with a pleading tone in my voice. I can't tell you outright. I'm already late. Someone's going to be worried about me. But I can give hints. I really didn't know who Ian was. He didn't seem human at that point, but I was going to take any help I could get. I sat, flashlight gripped in my hand, and a small amount of light, the only comfort. How do you think your two friends got out? He asked again. I groaned, but still not understanding. Because they took the right path, I answered. They took what they thought was the right path, he corrected. I stared at him. It really couldn't be that simple. It just couldn't be. He looked down into the dark where Leah was crying and cursing to herself, and I was embarrassed. It took me so long to clue in. We're trapped because Leah keeps saying we're going the wrong way? Ian rolled his head on his knees a little, making it hard to tell if he was agreeing with me or not. But sure, the first time he was showing us the way out, Leah doubted it. But it could not be that simple. The world doesn't work like that. There are right paths and there are wrong paths. Dead ends don't just appear because one person thinks that they're trapped. I'm not talking about the way out of here. Let me make that clear. I'm not saving you. I'm just giving you an example of how things work. If someone's decided to be miserable, sometimes... Sometimes you can't change their mind. They'll only burden you and drag you down. Your friends walked out together... Are you and Leah together? Right now? Ian asked, sounding serious. Who thought being trapped inside of an abandoned mine was the same as being trapped in a terrible relationship? I mean, I understand what he's saying, but, but I, I couldn't leave her. I can't leave her behind, I told him, eyes cast downward. Then you'll die. He didn't sugarcoat his words. Standing up, he looked down at me, waiting for a few seconds before starting to walk down the dark path and away from us, his little flip-flops echoing in the darkness. Sitting, I listened to both his footsteps going towards what I knew now to be the way out. And Leah's soft crying. She either didn't hear us, or she didn't care. If I left her, she might never get out. <laughs> I'd be... leaving her to die. If I didn't, I would die here with her. She wouldn't have a second thought about leaving me behind. I knew that much. My decision was made only after I realized if one of us got out, we could send help to retrieve the one still lost. Getting up, I followed behind Ian. It was as simple as that. I expected to see the right paths out, and I was out, the setting sun blinding me as I walked out of the cave. My phone buzzed in my pocket, and my friends did, in fact, start heading to their car and wanted to see if, if I was out yet and needed a ride home. I frantically called them, saying Leah was still stuck inside. My entire body turned to ice when both my friends had no idea who I was talking about. Awkwardly getting them off the line, I started to go through my photos to see none of Leah. No Facebook account, no message, 
nothing. She was not only missing, she was just gone. The ring's still in my pocket. That's the only proof that she was real to at least one person. You got out. Good for you. I looked over to my side and saw Ian standing a few feet away from me. Because of the light of the sunset, his hair looked almost white. His blue eyes took on a reddish tint. After everything, I knew he wasn't human. And yet, I didn't know what he could possibly be. Is she gone? Like, forever? I asked. I did fall out of love with her inside the cave, but that didn't change the fact that I... I loved her at some point. I didn't want her to just fade away like this. It's up to her. All she needs to do is walk forward. Even if she does get out, you really shouldn't marry her. You're not a good match. I felt awkward, but still let out a small chuckle at his honesty. I still had one more question for her. Why did you save me? At any point, Ian could have left us behind. He gained nothing by getting me out of that cave. After my question, he fidgeted with the hem of his shirt and mumbled something I didn't hear. He finally looked and was acting his age. Any kind of intimidating air from him was gone. I didn't save you. You figured it out on your own and... And... Don't hold someone's hand just after meeting them. They might get attached. Ian snapped, face flushed in a red light. He didn't sound angry, just embarrassed. I took everything I had not to laugh at him. My eyes filled with tears, holding in snorts. The only reason why I was alive is because I treated Ian... kindly. For some reason, he must not have people offer to hold his hand often enough for it to be a treat when it happens. And I didn't save you, he shouted, face still red and gave a sharp point in my direction. He stomped one foot and started to huff away, knowing there was no way for him to regain his composure around me. Well, thank you for not saving me, I called after him. I only saw his back, but I think it made him even more embarrassed. Some time has passed since then. I never found out if Ian was his real name or what he was. I mean, I'm still thankful he showed up when he did. I still go by the mine entrance, waiting to see if Leah comes out. If she does, I'm, I'm not going to date her. But at least... At least I'll still be around to support her and, and keep her life on track. It might be because I feel guilty. But I guess... The reason doesn't matter. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching tonight's video, or listening to tonight's podcast. I want to tell you about one quick thing before we say goodbye for the evening, and that's going to be about the Mr. Creepypasta plush. The plush is only available for a limited time. So if you guys head over to makeship.com, then you guys are able to get this Mr. Creepypasta plush. It's super cool. It glows in the dark, which is really cool. And he's super soft and cuddly. So it's uh, makeship.com slash products slash Mr. Creepypasta hyphen plush. Or you know what's easier? makeship.com. Uh, there you go. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who is supporting me on Patreon. If you guys have been supporting me on Patreon, or if you're considering doing so, then know that I just added in a couple of cool things for the loyalty program because I found out that I could. I had no idea that I could do that. So now, <laughs> you guys should be getting some cool things in the mail brought to you by Patreon that are pretty cool. They support the channel as well. Oh, getting to the point though, a huge thank you to patrons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Ars, Bobby Carmen, Stephanie Butler, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, William King, Heather McDonald, Reaper 61167, Alex the Sandwich, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Ness 69420, Isoto Hatred with two exclamation points, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Melancholy Corpse, Ferb, Harley, Billy Morrow, Madam Skull Bunny, Sashi Sazaku, Grizzly Olsen Dut Pro, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weeds, Jay, Miss Alexandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, 
Potato Chip, Acid System, Kozak and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kier the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nina Smith, Nico Kayo, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much, so, so much, so, so, so much for being a part of the Patreon and helping me keep the lights on and helping me get exclusive stories and everything that we do on the channel here. Thank you guys so, so much for being a part of it. Thank everybody in the description and thank you guys who have stayed to this part of the video. It really means so much to me. I hope you all have a very happy Halloween and sweet dreams.